Good morning. Welcome to Kilmarnock and to our online service on this, the first Sunday after Easter. We hope that you enjoy sharing in our worship today and in particular enjoy singing the hymns in the comfort of your own home. We've got some more favourite Easter hymns for you today as we focus on Thomas and on his reaction when told of Jesus rising. And now I'll hand you over to my friend Taylor for his message of welcome. Thank you, Jim. Hello, and may I also say a word of welcome to everyone gathering in worship at Church Online Kilmarnock today. This is Low Sunday, the Sunday after Easter. Low Sunday. I've always wondered why it is called this. So I dug around the internet and found that it is also called Quasimodo Sunday. And that comes from a time when all services were conducted in a different language, in Latin. Quasimodo genitae infantes. Something like, like just-born infants, like newborn infants. And that seems about right for me. For as we move away from our celebration of Easter for another year, we should feel like newborns, risen to new life that the risen Jesus brings. So, Quasimodo Day. Let's gather in worship and in praise together. Almighty and everlasting God, the life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone. And its place remembers it no more. But you are forever, from everlasting to everlasting. And we put our trust in you. For you have promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Loving Lord, in this last year, through the worst of a global pandemic, we've been face to face with our fragility and vulnerability, perhaps for some of us as never before. Against that backdrop of hurt and loss, we give you thanks for the life and service of Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. Some are called to the front of the stage, others to supporting roles, and we rejoice in the way he supported Her Majesty the Queen through all the years of her reign. We remember too his work supporting charities and perhaps most memorably for young people for over 60 years, his patronage of the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme. In this hour of loss, we offer our heartfelt prayers for Her Majesty and her family. Comfort them in their loss, bind up their wounds, and grant them the consolation of a store of treasured memories. Grant Her Majesty the peace that comes from knowing you and which passes all understanding. These and all our prayers we ask in the name of Jesus, who through his life, death and resurrection offers us hope instead of despair, life 
instead of death. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning boys and girls. I hope you are enjoying your Easter holiday and having lots of fun. Easter is a very special time and not only for Easter eggs which are lovely and hot cross buns which I like because at Easter we celebrate Jesus rising from the tomb and also that he is alive and with each one of us today and every day. Easter is also seen as the start of spring with sunny days, flowers starting to grow in our gardens and butterflies flitting from one flower to another. We have a lot to be thankful for, so we are going to pray to God and thank him. Let us pray. Loving God, this is the day that starts the week. This is the day of rising. This is the day that starts new life. This is the day we sing for joy for Christ our Lord. Though killed on a cross, is now alive forever. And so we gather together to rejoice and give thanks. We give thanks for all our friends we play with each day, for games and fun, for laughter and singing. We thank you for all the people who help us to have happy holidays, especially our mums and dads. We thank you for the story of Jesus, who loved little children and liked to hear their praises. We thank you for the shining sun, for its light and its warmth, and for the happy feeling it gives us. We thank you for the lovely spring flowers, for their beautiful colours and their refreshing smell as they dance in the wind. Loving God, we thank you. Amen. And we now pray together in the words Jesus taught. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been learning all about the Easter story. It started on Palm Sunday, when Jesus and the donkey rode into Jerusalem and everyone was so excited to see him they were waving their palm leaves. But then as the week went on, the people turned against Jesus and he was crucified on Friday, Good Friday. But then on Easter Sunday, last Sunday, we celebrated because Jesus returned to us. He died and came back to life. The angel rolled the stone away. Now we know that story. But Jesus' friends, who were living at that time, they didn't know what had happened to Jesus. They thought he had died and were very, very sad. They were also frightened because the people who'd come after Jesus might want to come after them and do the same horrible things. So you can imagine just how excited all of the disciples, all of Jesus' friends were when he came to visit them. But there was one friend missing, and that was a man called Thomas. And Thomas later on, he spoke to his friends and they were like, oh my goodness, our Lord Jesus is back. Our friend is back. Our teacher has come back from the dead to see us. But Thomas, he didn't believe it because he hadn't seen it. And he didn't believe things that he hadn't seen. And he said, I will only believe that my Lord Jesus is back when I can see him, when I can see the wounds where they crucified him, when I can touch the wounds and know that it's true. Well, the next week, Jesus came to visit his friends again. And this time Thomas was there. And Thomas was very surprised to see Jesus. But he looked at the wounds on his hands, saw that the spear had gone into his side, and he believed it. He knew that his Lord was back. And Jesus said to him, he said, do you believe because you can see me? How happy are those who can believe without seeing me? And do you know who those happy people are? They're people like me and they're people like you. Because we cannot see God, but we know he's always there looking down on us. Jesus lived on earth a very long time ago, long before we were born. But we know that he's watching over us and that makes us happy. But some people, they're like Thomas and they only believe things that they can see. But we can look around and see all the wonders of God's creation and know that God made all of this for us to enjoy. We don't have to see Jesus to know that he came down from heaven, lived amongst us, died and then came back to life again, all for us. We know it's true and that gives us joy and hope. And what I want to do now, boys and girls, is read you a version of the story of when Jesus returned to his friend. And it's called Not a Ghost Story. Imagine that someone who died just appeared Someone you loved, would it feel good or weird? So when Jesus appeared in a room that was locked, his disciples were startled and frightened and shocked. It's his ghost, they all whispered, and every knee knocked, sighing, goodbyeing and crying. There's no need to fear, Jesus said with a smile. It's me and I'm back. Well, at least for a while. Touch my hands and my feet. You can't touch a ghost. And ghosts never eat. But I'd like a fish roast. 
My new body will last forever and ever. No boast. No more sighing, goodbyeing and crying. But Thomas was missing and didn't believe that Jesus had been. He still wanted to grieve. Unless I can see for myself, Thomas said, his hand and his side, the places he bled. I won't be convinced that he rose from the dead. I'll be sighing, goodbyeing and crying. So Jesus returned to his friends the next week. Thomas, he said, here's the proof that you seek. Touch the holes in my hands and the wound in my side. See and believe that your friends have not lied. My Lord and my God, Thomas said, you're alive. And stopped sighing, goodbyeing and crying. For the next 40 days, Jesus met with his friends. Five hundred or so saw him living again. Then he led them all up to a hilltop on high and said, let the world know that I am alive. Then up through the clouds he rose into the sky. No more sighing, goodbyeing and crying. Thanks very much boys and girls for your attention. Let us now come together in prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God. You forgave our sins and cleansed us from all iniquity. You gave us the chance to begin every day anew. Lord, may our church be an accepting and loving church. May it help to free those who are paralysed by fear and doubt. May it reach out to those who do not know your love and bring them to you. We remember that we are part of your mission and we pray for all who are involved in outreach. As we approach this new week, may we live in harmony with our neighbours, helping each other in difficult times. Come, Holy Spirit, deepen our faith in the one who created us, confidence in the one who saved us and fill our hearts with your peace. May we now focus with memory this Sunday after the pastel finery is packed away, the lunch is not as great, the anticipation for corporate worship has dropped down 
from the seasonal high we felt just a week ago. There is less excitement, less panache, less decor. May we remain focused this week ahead as well as this service of worship. Let us not doubt in any way like those disciples that were huddled together in fear, not faith. They tended their wounds, not flaunted their tiredness, and then they worshipped Jesus. We are so grateful for all that Jesus did, laying his life on that cross, the pain, the anguish, and all for us that our sins may be forgiven. So may our week ahead be filled with the Spirit of God, renewed, fresh, and prepared to read our Bibles each day and pray. Fill our hearts, our minds with gladness that we have the faith, the belief, the courage to proclaim that we follow you with gladness in our hearts. For reconciliation to come around, give us grace, good Lord, to notice our stolid squareness, then so much more grace to embrace the complete round in ourselves. Where rough edges have been smoothed, where hard opinions have been softened, we give thanks, for that here is the space for reconciling love. Increase our faith and guide us. For Lord, you are the way through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first reading is from Psalm 133. Listen for the word of God. In praise of living in peace. How wonderful it is, how pleasant for God's people to live together in harmony. It is like the precious anointing oil running down from Aaron's head and beard, down to the collar of his robes. It is like the dew on Mount Hermon, falling on the hills of Zion. That is where the Lord has promised his blessing, life that never ends. Amen.
our hearts before the Lord in prayer, let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of a mind which can put doubts aside and fears behind that trusts in your presence and your promise that we have life in your name. Almighty Father, whose word of love called into being this great miracle of life itself, this wonder of the world, this massive universe, rich in detail and design. We rejoice that by your Spirit you established this world of life, revealing yourself through mystery in Jesus, your Word made flesh. Bless your church, Lord, those followers of Jesus, here and everywhere. Confirm people in their faith. Inspire them with love for your house, zeal for your service, and joy in working for your kingdom. Merciful Father, bless the whole world with peace. Kindle in the hearts of all people true love, and guide with your wisdom the leaders of the nations, that your kingdom may advance until the earth be filled with the knowledge of your love. Merciful God, bless with your comfort all who are in trouble or pain. Heal those who are sick. Support those who are dying and console those who mourn. In a moment of quiet, Lord, we name those whom we pray for. We give thanks for those who have gone into glory, especially those known to us who have entered into the joy and peace of your presence. Grant that we may follow their example and come to share with them the glory of everlasting life. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now for a short poem called When Thomas Heard From Jesus. When Thomas heard from Jesus, now come and follow me. He surely went with gladness, for there was much to see. He witnessed Jesus' teaching and saw his healing touch. He found a faith to guide him, a friend he loved so much. When Jesus spoke of heaven, bold Thomas dared to say, We don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? He wanted understanding of what he could not see. Then Jesus reassured him, The way is here through me. When crowds began to murmur and leaders raised their cry, brave Thomas spoke out firmly, Let's go with him and die. He ate at Jesus' table, partaking wine and bread. Yet later, with the others, he saw the cross and fled. What joy on Easter evening, when many saw the Lord. Yet Thomas was not with them, and would not trust their word. When Christ appeared before him, his doubts were quickly gone. He gladly knew that evening the joy of Easter dawn. That man of faith saw Jesus at breakfast by the sea. At Pentecost he witnessed so others would believe. O Lord, may we, like Thomas, keep growing day by day. Increase our faith and guide us for Lord you are the way. Good morning. Today's second Bible reading is from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Listen for the word of God. It was late that evening and the disciples were gathered together 
behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy at seeing the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. Thomas said to them, Unless I see the scars of the nails in his hands, and put my finger on those scars, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, the disciples were together again indoors, and Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Then stretch out your hand and put it in my side. Stop your doubting and believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Do you believe because you see me? How happy are those who believe without seeing me. Amen.
we are the first Sunday after Easter. We've had our Holy Week services walking that road to Jerusalem from the hosannas of Palm Sunday to the cries on the cross and from the riot in the temple to the betrayal at the Garden of Gethsemane. From the Last Supper to the joy of the resurrection morning. Well, I came across this poem recently with the title In the Sprouting of the Seed, and it's got a powerful message for us. In the sprouting of the seed and the fruiting of the flower, we celebrate new life and live the Easter faith. In the wonder of a birth, in the laughter of a child, we celebrate new life and live the Easter faith. In the coming of our worth, in the caring for ourselves, we celebrate new life and live the Easter faith. In the linking of the past, in the presence of the dead, we celebrate new life and live the Easter faith. In Christ's rising from the dead, in God's bursting from the tomb, we celebrate new life and live the Easter faith. We are an Easter people. We stand this side of the resurrection. That cross, it was the pivotal point in history. And we now live the Easter faith. We are an Easter people. And that means that Easter is a reality, a reality that affects and shapes the rest of our lives. That first Easter, there were those who doubted. There were those who just couldn't take it in. And there were those like Thomas who demanded the proof of what others were saying. And Thomas became known as Doubting Thomas just because of his reaction. Unless I see the scars of the nails in his hands and put my finger on those scars and my hands in his side, I will not believe. You know, I have a lot of sympathy for Thomas because I think I would have done exactly the same. If my friends had told me something quite unbelievable, then I would have wanted to see with my own eyes. He wasn't being unreasonable. He was being logical. Well, it was a whole week later, a week in which no doubt they had been arguing and retelling that story. A week of questioning and wonder. But a whole week later that Jesus again came to the disciples. But this time, Thomas was there. And after sharing the peace with them, Jesus turned to Thomas and said, put your finger here and then look at my hands. Then stretch out your hand and put it in my side. So stop your doubting and believe. And here's the point of the story that most people miss. That this is not so much a story about doubt, but the story of one man's road to faith. And Thomas answered, and he answered for all the world to hear, my Lord and my God. And that was a declaration of faith, nothing less. Yes, he maybe took a different route from the other disciples. And he maybe took longer to get there. But it was unmistakably a declaration of faith. And yet we remember poor Thomas, not for his statement of faith, but for his time of doubt. This is the real story of a journey of a man moving from doubt to faith, of someone asking questions, struggling, 
and then finding faith. And that story is a story that many people today will identify with. And I suspect that for most people, finding faith is a journey. A journey that starts off by exploring the reason and the purpose of our lives. A journey that then leads to new experiences and to some difficult questions. A journey that is at times joyful and exciting and at other times painful and heartbreaking. But a journey of learning and growing. A journey of testing and of challenge. Thomas's story tells us that it's okay to question and to doubt. For that is part of the journey. But it's a story also calling us to have faith and to have faith especially at these times like now when the world seems to be turned on its head. I suspect that for most people finding faith is about a journey. A journey that starts off by exploring the reason and the purpose of our lives. A journey that then leads to new experiences and also to some difficult questions. A journey that is at times joyful and exciting and at other times painful and heartbreaking. But a journey of learning and growing. A journey of testing and of challenge. Thomas's story tells us that it's okay to question and doubt. For that is part of the journey. But it's a story also calling us to have faith, especially at those times like now when the world seems to be turned upside down. Amen. Mm -hmm.